It's a fact that every single channel on YouTube and every single network on television will at one point fade away and die and be replaced by something more contemporary, whether it's 10 years from now or 100 or even 1,000 years in the future. But in the gaming scene, it feels like that timeline is a lot shorter. Things don't last nearly as long, and if you've been around for even a few years, you've probably seen several companies come and go. This one, too, will at one point fade away. So until then, subscribe, because the number going up makes me feel a lot better. So, <laughs> But it's pretty rare that a channel dies twice. In fact, dying twice has only really happened to Jesus, Gandalf, and G4. So let's take a look at the death of G4, which if you haven't heard, was just announced yesterday. If you don't know, G4 is a gaming network that started in 2002 that would air at basically every GameStop that was trying to make gaming cool. Hold me, Morgan. Nice try, but the show isn't going to blow up. And it was very formative to a lot of gamers in the early years. They eventually faded out in like 2014 and then announced a comeback. A comeback that was meant to happen in 2021. Here's the announcement trailer. That's right, November 16th, 2021. There, we said it, it's happening. We're committed for realsies. And saying for realsies aside, they did come back. And less than a year later, if you're keeping up with dates, they are now gone. It was a leaked memo from the CEO of Comcast, Dave Scott, who basically said, hey, G4 was reintroduced, we tried, didn't work out, see you later. And they cut uh, everything, effective immediately. Um, and I did, I did say leaked memo because that is also how basically everybody who worked at G4 found out that they got fired. <laughs> this is Gerard the Completionist saying, hey, this tweet is how I found out I lost my job. How neat. Nothing like finding out via an article that you don't have a job anymore while flying home to your grandfather's funeral. Found out from a news article on mental health leave. Uh, okay, I was in active negotiations for a contract with G4, lol. Hey, just found out my company shut down. Anyone need a producer? I'm in Hawaii. You get the point. All right, a lot of people found out that they were getting let go from this leaked memo. Uh, but why did they shut down? W what was so wrong with the business model? And why did it not even last a year? Because I think, honestly, they had a few great things going for them. Uh, and just to be clear, they announced from their own Twitter that they are for sure done. But let's take a look for a moment uh, at, at, at the history of G4. Because about a month ago, they let go 20 to 30 staff members, right? Because they had a lot of people. I went to their studio to record Damien Price, and their overhead's huge. They have a beautiful warehouse, had a beautiful warehouse. They had dozens and dozens and dozens of employees and a lot of original IP. But I think that's the problem, all right? The way the gaming sphere works is it's kind of dominated by a bunch of individual influencers, gaming creators. It's pretty hard for any network to tap into the space because it always comes off a bit cringe. Think like Ninja's New Year celebration. Even that, which was an influencer forward project, was done by a giant network and came off super out of touch. And I think that happens a lot in gaming. Because it is so influencer forward and because influencers are so much more adaptive and there are so many and it's so competitive, any network's not going to just be able to keep up with what the people want without coming across as outdated or just straight up cringe. And not to say that everything G4 made is cringe or outdated, but more so to say that the viewership they had did not really reflect the amount of money that they were spending for that viewership. I mean, look, we're talking an average of 1,600 viewers with an overhead that is higher than any individual streamer. Now, averaging 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 viewers, it's great on its own. In a vacuum, that's an amazing number. But when you are spending millions and millions of dollars a year on employees, on a warehouse, on all the studio production equipment, it doesn't add up. The math does not add up. And I think the original game plan of G4 which is basically to bring back their uh, uh, original shows like X-Play and Attack of the Show, was a bad idea, right? What are the things that G4 did that were great, that worked out really well? I would argue it was like Name Your Price. If you don't know, that was a show made by Austin Show that was produced by G4 Network. And it got 400,000 views on YouTube and it had like, I think, 40, 50,000 live viewers. And it was a very successful show. And G4 produced it but then they had this weird thing where they were also re-uploading it on their own channel, and, and that one would get like 30,000 views. 
honestly, <laughs> if G4 had bar for bar just done what we were trying to do at off-brand, I think it could have been successful. Because they definitely have the ability to make cool shows as long as they're influencer forward. And then the influencer who they're working with can make sure that that reaches a big audience. And what G4 has that many people don't have is a great sales arm. They have a better sales arm than any, any streamer in the world is even close to. Because we're not just talking about like selling Snickers for name your price. And, and, and now Snickers will, will get 400,000 views. Wow, cool. We're talking about the ability to sell that to network television. We're talking about the ability that 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 influence, influencers could could actually touch traditional media. Like Scott the Waz actually had a show on TV through G4 Network, which I think was a cool opportunity for him that he was really excited about. Unfortunately, though, the overhead was too big to keep a lot of their original IP going, which wasn't really hitting the mark in terms of viewership. And although that might be the lifeblood and there was a lot of great talent in there, it just wasn't working. They needed to cut it earlier, and they needed to focus on making shows. And it was announced that even Carl Jacobs was working on a show with G4. So I feel like if they had a longer lifespan, they would have made it. But that is also the problem with being funded by Comcast. You only have as much time as they give you. And if you don't show results in the time that they want, and the investor pulls out, you're out of money. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. You can't exactly go public and start asking people for money. Uh, unless you're phase and you're making a spec. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what does that mean for the future of other G4 shows? Well, Austin talk, or Will talked about it on his stream. He 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 made Hey Donna through G4. I, here's what I'll say. I don't know enough to tell you that you'll never see Donna or name your price again. Um, I you might you might not. Either way, uh, I'm really proud of both those projects. I'm really proud of uh, Attack of the Show. And in everything we accomplished there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know. Um, you know, I... And that's about it. It's a big I don't know. Because he doesn't know where the funding will come from anymore. G4 was hemorrhaging money to produce these shows with the hopes that they would somehow capture an audience and never succeeded in doing that. It doesn't really transfer if Austin makes a show called Name Your Price that those viewers will suddenly want to watch Attack of the Show. The attack of the show and I think the original IP aspect of G4 kind of tanked it. Even though I think, again, there was a lot of talented people who were working on those projects. It just doesn't make sense in the current age. Usually people who watch streams go online just to watch the streamer they like. And anytime it feels too corporate, people hate it. That's why there needs to be an element of scuff involved. So I'm just going to end with this. If anyone did work at G4 and is looking for an opportunity, hit me up. Because Off-Brand is a very similar company to what G4, I think, was turning into before Comcast cut them short. Then we're looking to hire talented people. So I figured I'd throw it out there. You can shoot me a DM or email us if you go over to our website, offbrand.gg. Bit of a plug here, but hey, a lot of people lost their jobs, so don't blame me for that. Thanks for watching, boys. And then we'll see if G4 comes back a third time. Imagine first time, three time. See you later.